Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a air pump on a Mercedes-Benz. I'm going to be doing this on a SLK 55 AMG year 2005, but this also applies to many other Mercedes-Benz models. Um, in all of my research I have found that a lot of the newer Mercedes are designed with the exact same system. So the parts you're going to need are this relay. It's a genuine Mercedes-Benz relay. It's just kind of like a little, little plug it looks like. I bought this on eBay for around 30 bucks. And the relay that we're going to replace actually looks a little different. It only has three prongs, but this one has four and they say it's a multi-purpose, so we'll find out if it works. And next you're going to need the replacement air pump. This is a Bosch original air pump. This little tiny part cost $439 on eBay. Um, still doing the repair myself is costing around 500 bucks, but you know, still better than bringing it to the dealer. I probably would have charged you around 1000 1500 to $2,000. I didn't get an actual estimate to verify that, but obviously it will be more there. And obviously all your tools. And last but not least, a nice hot coffee in your genuine Mercedes-Benz lifestyle collection mug. Especially if it is a very cold day, like it is here in February in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. So let's go outside and get started. All right, now before we get started, I just wanna give a little bit of background on what exactly we're fixing here. So, first things first, you can see this check engine light blinding me constantly while I'm driving this car. And I bought this car about two years ago and my registration rule's coming up. So in order to get a emission sticker to pass the emissions test we have here in Connecticut, that needs to be off. So, here I am spending 500 bucks just to get this to pass. Um, I bought, when I bought this car, about a month after I bought it, one day I came home from work and I turned the car off and got out of the car and I noticed that it was still, um, there was some a fan still running, like something was going and I hadn't known at the time what it was because I hadn't done any research yet. Um, but what it was is it's the air pump that we're going to be replacing, which is also known as a, like a smog pump or it's like an emissions system pump. And what this pump does is it turns on when you start the car, it turns on for the first 30 seconds to a minute roughly while the car is warming up. And this pump, um, pumps air to the catalytic converters to warm them up, um, from a cold start. And you'll actually hear it turn on and then you'll hear it turn off about uh, 30 seconds to a minute after the car warms up. Um, in this car, you'll see that it doesn't even turn on, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so what had happened was that day I came home, I turned the car off, and it was still on. I had no idea what to do, so I just let it... It just kept running and running and running for about 10, 15 minutes until the fan eventually died. Um, and what the issue is, is there's a relay that controls that fan turning on and off. It was switched on and stayed, the relay must have gotten screwed up. We're going to be replacing that too, leaving the air pump on. So it just kept going and going and going until it burned out. So hopefully this video will be informative to you and will help save you a lot of money in the repair and prevent it from happening again in the future. All right, so here we are now under the hood. And um, I do apologize if you hear a lot of background noise because I live in a pretty busy neighborhood. So hopefully you can follow along. Um, this is actually a really easy repair. It only takes about 30 minutes. Um, well, we'll see. In the end, I'm kind of filming as I'm going. Um, so whatever you do, do not let the dealer scam you into paying a lot of money for labor on this. If you do decide them to have them do it. Um, so first things first, you're going to come here to this um, fuse box here. Just open that up. Just pops right off. And this is where the relay is located. So the one that we're going to replace is this purple one right here. This is what controls the air pump. In many cases, you may also need to re um, also replace a fuse if the fuse goes. There's a fuse associated with it. I believe it's this one, but I'm not 100% sure. I checked my fuse and it looks fine. Um, you could see the little, it does not like burned out in the middle. So it's just the relay in my case. And what I'm going to do first is just replace the relay and see if that fixes the problem. Uh, I'm guessing it's not. So this is just very easy. It just comes out. 
like a plug. See, before I mentioned it has three prongs, the one I have has four, so... But what's weird is it has like a placeholder for the fourth one, so let's give that a try. We got all my supplies here that I showed you earlier. Let's compare these two side by side. See, they do look to be the same. It's just this one has an extra prong here that this one doesn't have. But the pattern appears to be the same, and in the relay box, there's like a like an empty blank hole that you that this one will go into. So I guess it just won't do anything. So let's try that out. There we go. Piece of cake. So what we're trying to fix here is <clears throat> the pump is located here and on this SLK 55 VMG it's very easy to get to. Um, all you have to do is lift this piece right here which comes off of the engine cover. So let's try that out. So all I did was just lift this and you just have to pull. It's pretty cheap. I mean it's not anything complicated here at all. Oh my god. All right, there we go. It like lifts up and then slides towards you. Seem like kind of just get it. There we go. All right, so this is the f actual front of the engine now that's covered by that lovely cover. And here's the pump right here that we're going to replace. Let's try out starting the car and see if it even turns on. I'm pretty sure it's not on right now. It's vibrating, but I'm pretty sure that's just the normal engine vibration. You would normally be able to hear it. It's like a high-pitched kind of fan squealing noise. So I'm pretty sure we do need to replace the fan now. All right, so I'm back outside again. I checked my um, instructions, which again are the same ones the dealer uses. And it looks like what I have to do is few simple steps. Remove this hose right here from the actual air pump. Remove it here from the, um, this is a check valve or some kind of valve. Remove this hose. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this hose. And probably the first thing I'm going to do is remove this. And then I'm going to, there's a bolt way down here that this whole piece is like mounted to. I'm going to remove that, lift this whole piece out, then there's just three bolts, one here, here, and here down at the bottom. That's going to be a little hard to get to, but I'm going to just remove that and then unplug the electrical connector, which is kind of hard to see. It's like right over here. Just unplug it. It's easy. Then I guess, you know, you could just kind of wiggle this whole air pump out, put it back in and install in reverse order. So I'm going to give that a try and see how it goes. All right, so here I am again, and sorry for all the pausing. It's just I'm kind of learning as I'm going here myself and hoping that this will solve the problem, and we'll see. Um, I'm just removing these. I removed this hose first by using my just a pair of pliers and just wiggled it gently. You know, you want to try not to crack this hose at all just because, um, you know, over time that can cause cracks and cause it to leak and will cause the vacuum pressure to drop, and that will cause a check engine light as well. So I removed this. Now I'm going to see if I could just kind of like cheat and just remove this air pump without removing this valve here, which is what the dealer instructions are telling me to do. Um, but all I did is I just used a ratchet here to, you know, just loosen up these three bolts and I'm going to remove it and see if I could just kind of wiggle it out. All right, so we'll see. 
Okay, so now I've removed these first two bolts, which now makes it so this fan's a little, little looser and wiggly. Um, I'm having a really hard time removing this bottom one way down there, so I guess you do have to remove this, as the instructions say from the dealer. In order to do that, I have to get to this bolt. It's kind of hard to see, way down there, which unscrews this whole, like, piece that this is mounted on. And to get to that, to get my screw, my driver down there, I first need to remove the hose. So that is what the instruction did say. I just was hoping I could get lucky and cheat a little bit, but I guess not. So what I'm finding is there's like a little groove here. And the easiest way to do this is to just use a flat head and just kind of like... And so I'm going to do that push on both off. sides here and probably over here too. Remove this piece altogether. Go down here with my Torx or whatever, that like hexagonal drill bit thing and unscrew that remove this whole thing then that will get me access to put my driver down here to get that piece loose and to unplug it and then just remove the whole thing okay so as you can see i'm trying to remove this is the air pump there's three bolts one two and then one buried way down here and the instructions the mercedes-benz dealer instructions from the actual shop manual are saying I need to first remove this by removing this bolt down here. You see it way buried down, straight down there. Um, and the whole reason of removing this piece as it comes off um, is just so that you can access that stupid little thing down there. Um, just to so in order to do this, I just had to remove this hose. Um, first, this one I was able to push off with like a flathead screwdriver, it just pops right off. These ones, if you just pinch them with your fingers, like right here, they do come off. It's just a little tight because of this thing here. So I'm just using a 10 millimeter um, attachment with an extension with a socket wrench. And that should let me undo this. There we go. And just unscrews off. All these screws, like once you just get past that initial, initial one, it's they pretty much just screw right off very easily. Just be very careful here. The whole thing comes right out. Okay. I just like to put everything in the box while I'm doing this so I don't lose any pieces. So now that that's out, we have a little more room here. We can just unplug this connector right here and remove this right here. Okay, so now that I had those parts removed, I just want to show how to remove this lower bolt because this was the, just a bitch to get undone. You just, you have to have your Torx bit on the end there, but you have to have one of these like angled like joint thingies to have it attached to a socket wrench here with an extension, and then you can finally get it to turn. Okay, I feel a lot better now that that last screw is undone. So all I did here is I just, you know, twisted it up just really tight in here. I cannot believe this. I mean, I have a old C280 as well, which um, never have issues like this. It's just a lot easier to work on, but here we go. Now we just want to unplug this out the power source here. I'm just pulling it straight out. I'm going to have to probably put the camera down and play with this a little bit. You just pull that out. This whole thing just comes out. Just lift it out like here. All right, so this is very, very tight, but I was able to turn it and play around with it and finally got it loose. So there we go. It's out. All of that work and effort just to get this stupid little part out. And now to replace the new one. I'm pretty sure it's running. I hear a high. I'm pretty sure it's running. I hear a high pitched squealing noise. It's kind of hard to hear because the AMG engine's so loud. But I'm gonna just wait and see. I'll be able to hear once it turns off. Yep, definitely worked. I just heard it switch off. So we're good. And that is how you fix an air pump on a Mercedes Benz. Hopefully this will turn off my check engine light, my P0410 error code is what I had.